Hello and welcome. My name is Daphna Adler and I'm one of the counselors here at Los Altos High School. I am really glad to present to students today our session on studying in Wales. And this is um, one of our ending sessions for International University Month, which has been going on this whole month of October. So we've had a, a really large series of webinars um, that were all recorded and are available to watch on the a YouTube channel for the College Career Center, and this session will be recorded as well. Um, I'm glad to introduce to you a great panel of speakers. Um, these uh, speakers are from different universities in Wales, all of which I have visited um, a few years ago, and I have to say Wales is really very, very magical, um, and I hope that students will uh, take Wales into consideration because there are some amazing universities, amazing programs, um, and amazing scenery around you while you do all of that. So it's, it's a pretty incredible place to go to college. Um, so we have with us today um, Rob Alexander from an organization called Universities Wales that promotes Welsh education abroad. Um, so he's not with one particular university, but kind of all of them. Um, we have Nick Braben from Cardiff Metropolitan University, Rachel Davies from Cardiff University. So those are both in the capital, um, which is Cardiff. Um, Jennifer Walker from Swansea University and Jackie Jaraki from Aberystwyth University. And fun fact about Aberystwyth, when you log on to Common App and you're searching for colleges, that very first college that you're, you look at that name and you're like, how the heck do I pronounce that? That's it. Aberyst with so check it out. Um, <laughs> all right, I'm going to now turn it over to Rob and um, he's going to lead our discussion about whales. Thanks, everyone. There we go. I found the unmute button. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about studying Wales along with my fantastic colleagues. Um, and we're going to do things a little bit different. Um, you've probably seen a lot of presentations. So I'm going to start off with the really boring stuff. The presentation and then i'm going to hand over to my colleagues and we're going to kind of open it up have a bit of a discussion about why you should think about studying in wales what subjects we're known for what the culture's like in wales because we are a little bit different a little bit more um, unique than other parts of the uk i'd say um, and then we'll come pull it all together talking about student life and bits and pieces like that so um, without further ado let me get on with this presentation so starting off with your basics the United Kingdom is made up of four different countries, Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and England. Nearly forgot about England then, how could I? Um, Wales, you can see us there. We're the really cool one with the dragon on our bag. Um, and we're all these countries, we are all very unique. We've all got our own culture, our history. And in some cases, like here in Wales, we have our own language, but you don't need to worry about that because everybody does speak English. Now, the UK as a whole is about the same size as New England. And I did have a quick Google because I was like, well, what's it like in size to California? And it is about two thirds the size of California. So that is the whole of the UK. So from the tip of Scotland all the way down to the bottom of England is only two thirds the size of California. So getting on to the main um, crux of the matter. So where is Wales? So we are on the island of Great Britain, like you saw in that map, although it did look like we were detached, it was just to show off our really cool flag. We are attached um, and we're about the same size as New Jersey, but we don't really shout about that. Um, so we're about 20 times smaller than California, so quite a bit smaller. Um, main important thing, the weather is seasonal here, um, which is similar to the rest of the UK. You can see our average temperature. So it's about 10 C or 50 Fahrenheit in winter, 21 C, 68 Fahrenheit in summer. One thing that we're known for in Wales and one thing that we're really proud of, and usually when I do this presentation, I talk about an affordable adventure. We are offering some of the lowest living costs in the UK. And recent studies have shown that we're about three to four times cheaper than London. So you can get a world-class degree and have your money go a lot further by living in Wales. Regular flights as well to Europe um, you, and um, to the US from Manchester, Cardiff, Birmingham or London. So we're about seven, probably 10 hours to the west coast of the US. But one thing that when it is safe to do so, you can get to the south of France, Spain in an hour and usually for about $100. So what's something that I used to do in the past is look at weekends away and see, right, where's cheap to fly? Can jump on a flight, go over to somewhere that's a little bit sunnier than Wales and then get back by Sunday evening and ready to start work again on the Monday. 
This is one of my favorite slides because Wales is becoming one of these booming areas. So you might see on film credits, you're seeing things like the Georgia peach popping up. It's not gonna be long until you start seeing the Welsh dragon appearing. So we've had Tom Hardy filming in Cardiff recently. Forrest Whitaker has just left the country and he said it's magnificent landscapes of Wales um, and he had to come visit them before flying back home. We've got Louise Guzman and Lin-Manuel Miranda who have popped up here again recently. Lin-Manuel was here in 2019 it was um, and he did a little pop-up in one of my favourite bars in Cardiff where he started just playing Les Mis songs um, really randomly and had a big old sing song with all the locals in there so quite um, quite a fun friendly guy actually from what I've heard. Taron Egerton, Jackie told me this the other day and I did not know this but he is a local resident of Aberystwyth so um, you never know walking around the streets you might bump into him and finally We've got these two who have brought Wrexham Football Club or Soccer Club in the summer and they're actually here today for the first time. So it's quite good that we're doing this presentation today and they both have appeared in Wrexham today um, after watching them lose yesterday in soccer and hopefully they'll win um, this Saturday. But that's it from me. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand over to Rachel and Nick to maybe talk me through a little bit, we'll talk you through a little bit about the culture of Wales, what makes us unique, what makes us a little bit different. Great. We're going to fight over who goes first, Nick. <laughs> That's my deal. Okay. Um, I think one of the things that really sets us apart and something I hear a lot about from students is how friendly people are here. Um, that as soon as you cross the border, you know you're in Wales, that people are very open, will come and have a chat with you on the street, happy to give you directions, are interested in hearing where you're from. Um, so that's something that I think is, is um, a distinctive factor when it comes to Welsh culture. Um, but one of the other things that I like to talk about um, is the language, which Rob touched upon as well. Um, so about 20% of people speak Welsh. So you absolutely don't have to be able to speak it, um, but it's something that I think is really interesting and you know you're in Wales because as soon as you cross the border, you're seeing bilingual signs, you're hearing announcements on public transport that are bilingual as well, um, and it's just a really cool part of our um, identity. It's also the oldest living language um, in Europe, so it's something that's quite special. Um, and it's something that we're working really hard to preserve in Wales, and you can absolutely study it if you want to. So we do have students who come over from the US who've maybe learned a bit um, online or have read a bit about Welsh, and that's one of the big kind of draws for them. Um, but even if you haven't, it's something that you can dip in and out of, and the locals here will be delighted if you want to practice your Welsh. Um, so definitely something that I think is, is a, a really cool aspect of studying here. Yeah, I think, I think some of the the... the other things that I, I talk a lot to students about is how there is literally something for everyone here. Um, you know, you might go to some cities, you know, London's very busy, you know, people don't really have time for you, but you can access quite a lot of things. But really in places like our cities, like Cardiff in particular as well, you know, everything's on your doorstep. You have everything, art, culture, history, um, every type of music. Um, so it really, really does tick a lot of boxes for students and um, you know we have these beautiful national parks you can get up to Brecon Beacon from Cardiff in a very short amount of time you can go up from Amber to the Snowdonia across even from Wrexham and um, so you know we they always say everything's very easy to get to and access and really affordable to do it um, you know we're rich in this history and culture we have festivals that we call the Ice Death of, which is a celebration of our arts, our music, our poetry. And again, you don't have to speak Welsh to go there. Um, you know, if you can get away by saying Shemai, which is how are things, or, you know, Borodar, good morning, and things like that, you normally are okay. But they are a real kind of collection of what Wales has on offer. Um, you could also probably touch on our singing. Um, the beautiful singing you'll hear at our stadiums when you go and see sport. Um, you know, our choirs are, are very much embedded in our history because they come from our heritage of coal mining and, and uh, you know, these communities would have these choirs. They now kind of compete with each other still, despite the mining industry being on decline. So, you know, it, it, you've got a city, you've got a town that would really suit every type of student. You know, not everyone wants to live in the big big, big cities here in the UK. Um, you know, Cardiff itself is about 370 odd thousand of us. 
Um, and then as you go down to Swansea, with a little bit short, smaller uh, population, Abba's up on the coast, Swansea's on the coast, you know, there really is every tick box that you can have. Yeah, I, I, I think you both have really started selling that culture element that we've got here in ways, but makes us that little bit more unique compared to some of the other countries like England, like you say, Rachel, you cross the border and it's already that warmth that you feel as you get into Wales. Um, how about you, Jennifer and Jackie? Is there anything that like you think that in the culture way, like you're the same as me, neither, <laughs> we're not initially from Wales. So anything else that you think that there's? I think for me, I mean, I am from Ireland originally, uh, studied in England and worked in England and came to Wales, came to Swansea uh, 20 years ago. And it, it, it was like coming home after being in England. For, so I enjoyed England, but honestly, as you say, it's the warmth of the welcome. It, it's the Celtic thing. It's, it's so like Ireland, the coast, the landscape are like Ireland. I uh, mentioned the rugby. Um, but it is, it's just such a very fantastic, welcoming, friendly place. And this, as Nick has said as well, like the location, there's a lot in common there. So for me, as I say, it was like coming home. So I'm uh, I highly recommend it. <laughs> How about you, Jackie, as our uh, American on the panel? <laughs> yeah, uh, so I came to study in Wales back in 2018 and I've loved it so much that I've stayed. So I have lots of reasons that, you know, I feel Wales is, you know, unique. Uh, but one thing that just kind of was sitting at the back of my mind hearing about all this was just how Wales always seems to promote local artisans, local makers and stuff like that. So where even if you're in this in Cardiff, you'll always see little mom and pop type shops that are local that have been around maybe for years or decades. And um, I know something that like was really popular in Aberdeen still is, is that we have a local milk vending machine which I know sounds very funny but it's from a farm it's just from a farm that is five minutes outside of Aber and it's a local family that you've been a dairy farmer for 30 generations and just like how much the community rounds like gets together to support small businesses and make sure that they thrive and there's that always whilst you do have the chain stuff you know there's McDonald's and Starbucks everywhere still but you still get to have that experience of going and supporting a small business within your local community here. I think that's a great point to make, Jackie, actually, because the Welsh Government as well are supporting startups, they're supporting businesses. So if you've got that entrepreneurial mindset, then there is government support there to help you on that step up, to help you and give you that support into creating the startup, as there is amongst many universities. Well, all of our universities in Wales have support available for those students who are looking into that and looking into maybe that more entrepreneurial stuff. So, But I'll save that for maybe a little bit later. So we've kind of gone over the culture, what makes us unique. Let's move on to the nitty gritty now. Let's go into subjects. So if I go to Jen first then, Jen, do you want to talk a bit about um, subjects at Swansea, um, what, or what subjects in general that we're known for in Wales? Um, yeah, let us give us an Yeah, insight. sure. So we've got um, all the colleges that you could, that will cover all interests, you know, from engineering, et cetera. But I'd say the most popular for us at Swansea for uh, American students, criminology and psychology for sure is always massively popular and um, really engaging. And we get such good feedback from the uh, from the academics as well about how the students have engaged and really brought color and richness to the, to the lectures for um, UK and other students as well, with that different perspective. And then probably second one, I would say um, English literature, creative writing is really, really popular as well um, at Swansea. So that's the top two that I would pick for us for now. OK, thank you. Jackie, how about you at ABBA? Uh, I mean, again, same with English, but we also have a really large history population um, from well, American students studying history here. And uh, I think a lot of that accumulates to us having the National Library of Wales here in Aber. I mean, Cardiff has the museums. We have the giant library. Um, <laughs> so that is very similar to the Library of Congress. So if you love old books and such, there, I mean, you can find them anywhere, basically. But that is, uh, history is a big one. And then international politics as well. So that's what I would say for Aber. Awesome. Um, and Rachel, how about over in Cardiff, Cardiff Uni? I find it really fascinating with um, US students because they tend to apply for a really broad range of subjects, which keeps my job nice and interesting. 
Um, but some of the subjects that I get probably the most interested in would be things to do with media and journalism. So we have one of the best journalism schools in the UK and it's um, in recent years moved to be co-located with the new BBC studios in Cardiff as well. So that's a real benefit to our students, uh, but also international relations. And we have really strong connections with Welsh government, um, we've got Welsh parliament in Cardiff too. Um, so if you're looking at studying international relations and politics, it's a great place to study because it's such a fascinating way to study those subjects both from a kind of Welsh perspective and uh, obviously a UK perspective as well um, and the university's invested a lot of money into international relations in particular over the last few years so that's definitely a big draw for us. It's great thank you I will say I went on a tour of the journalism building yesterday randomly and the facilities there are yeah are amazing and because it's yeah. that it's the new building like you say you're in one kind of classroom and you can see the BBC you can see yeah. people actually like creating news and I had to get pulled away from the window though it's just yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah it's really cool. uh, Nick oh so Cardiff Met tell me a bit about the subjects there what yeah, not to be confused with Rachel at Cardiff Uni which most people think we're like an, an extra college of theirs but we do complement um I would say the subjects that Cardiff Uni has to offer um, we are a smaller university um so we tend to focus on art and design education uh, sport and health science, technology and management. So behind me is our King Coy campus, which isn't as big as probably the universities are used to back home. Um, so it's uh, pretty much sports dominated. So my students are quite widespread as well, like everyone else. Um, I tend to attract a lot of students into art and design, um, but also into the sport and health sciences and, ma and management side. Um, and that's because we do a lot of work for like a play and, uh, play and study approach to sport that you don't have to just study sport to be a, an athlete. Um, and that's been really popular in the US. We've actually attracted a, a lot of top talent um, in games like rugby, uh, which is quite funny. Uh, not your nature, uh, natural sport, but uh, maybe we're swinging them from American football. I don't know. But, um, you know, those are really good areas for us. We have um, some excellent sport and exercise facilities. Uh, we do a lot of um, kind of work with everything from um, performance sports, uh, rehabilitation and things like that with a lot of the government bodies here. So, you know, Welsh Rugby Union, Welsh Netball, as well as um, having some of our own head coaches still represent in GB. So, um, you know, one of our basketball head coaches represents GB at the Olympics and has also come from the US. So it's, um, you know, a nice diverse kind of effect here. Not to be confused with <laughs> And I know Jen said this when saying, but pretty much if you're looking for a subject, it will be offered at one of our universities here in Wales. Um, and if you speak to any one of us and we don't offer that, so well, I say we, if one of my colleagues don't offer that subject, they'll know a university that will and they'll be able to put you in touch with that university. They'll be able to link you up the right person that you need to speak to. So, yeah, it's whatever your interest, anything will offer it here in Wales. Um, I can assure you of that. Um, you said, Nick, about sports, and I, I know we're going to discuss a bit about it from the student life perspective. I think that'd be a really interesting thing, but just wondering about um, from the other colleagues from Jackie, Jen and Rachel, whether there's any kind of, um, do you notice that American students coming over and playing sports and studying as well, um, and not just down that traditional kind of sport route? I go. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, um, definitely get a lot of interest in, in sports. Um, I mean, it is quite different in the UK to how it is in the US university system, definitely. Um, but we have a high performance sport um, service at Cardiff, so students can get support for while they're studying, depending on kind of what their level is. There's lots of different teams to participate in, but certainly that's something that I get asked about a lot. I think because the expectation is there that um, playing sports will be a part of the university experience because it is in the US and that's certainly um, the case here too. Um, to the extent that UK universities typically have Wednesday afternoons free, which is supposed to be dedicated for playing sports or sometimes um, participating in societies and things like that. Obviously, you can probably expect to be training slightly more than once a week, but I think it gives you that indication that universities know that that's a really key part of your experience as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that Wednesday afternoon off is a definite winner. Uh, someone like myself who never did sports at university is still very much welcome to have that Wednesday afternoon off. <laughs> Nobody's spending that in the pub, though, obviously. No, no. <laughs> 
Um, Jackie, Jen, anything from you on this sports side of things, Jen? Again, it's, it's all very similar, you know, I said, because we're, we're, our campus is right on the beach in Swansea as well, we get all the access to the, the rail, the outdoors, as we got the swimming pool, the, the pool and the, all the um, AstroTurf facilities as well, but we've got the beach for um, beach volleyball, learning to surf, paddle boarding, all those kind of things as well, and it's, and then at the back we've got the, the hills and the mountains and that as well, so orienteering, climbing, hiking, all those, I think, so we can take from the campus, you can actually go and explore and I think there's so many uh, societies and even just making friends with people and locals with cars even as well just to get out of the city and go and explore because I think one of us said earlier on there's something for everyone really close it seems to be like and the major cities are where the universities are as well there's a lot of I wouldn't say a whole lot of nothing but there's a lot of empty rural land in Wales in you know in Powys and Snowdonia and things but all the the hubs where the universities are are all um so much activity and so easy easy access to get uh, the outdoor side of things as well as the organized sports too yeah definitely um and jackie from abba's perspective sports I mean, yeah we get lots of students that uh take part in sports and it's just something whilst jennifer was listing off all the different types of sports that were available that's definitely something that is uh very common in the uk that isn't common in the us you know the us you could expect that your university will have you know soccer football etc that that would be the sports that are created and you know, was that actually going to compete but in the uk you could have um i think a few years back we had something called underwater hockey and they were going and competing against other underwater hockey teams in the uk so there's literally sports for anything here uh, so if you have a more odd sport that you want to try out or if you're interested in horse riding for instance and wanting to do all that type of stuff th there's a society here and uh, that's not even related to sports we just have a wide variety of societies that range from all different interests and hobbies in general yeah um so jackie well talking about kind of societies bit and bit of a segue into it but like can you talk a bit about the kind of student support that's available then what kind of things from would a student coming over what kind of pastoral support would be available for them yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I did mention societies and most of these we found in what's called a student's union in the UK. And most student's union will actually have dedicated officers or offices that are meant to be there to support you with mental health or raising awareness if you're a minority group, just to make sure that you're uh, being, that you have safety and you have a network that you could connect with. And then outside of the student's union, all the universities have an accessibility and well-being office that is on hand. So if you have um, special uh, additional learning needs that you need assistance with or you have an issue that you don't feel comfortable talking about with others you can go to that office and seek help as well um, so there's all those offices and then just on top of that we have a national health care here so if you are struggling um, with any mental illness you can easily get go to your doctor and seek help as well without it costing as well yeah definitely and in wales you get free prescriptions which um, you don't get in England um, and that's just something that I'd like to say is amazing as someone from England when you come to Wales free prescriptions is great um, yeah so so kind of going on then from that so that's the pastoral support available and again about student societies Jen it, it, have you got any kind of experience with the student societies um, that are offered like talk a bit about what they are and what what's oh, available to students so, yeah yeah, for sure. And again, I'm sure I speak for um, all of us here. We have so much on offer. I think at Swansea, we've got like over 150 different societies and um, it's anything. And even if there isn't something that, you, you know, there for you, they're so welcome for you to come and create your own and, you know, get your own little, you know, society going. But I, I was like making a list earlier before, like anything, anime, baking, uh, you've got language clubs, you've got subject specific clubs, photography different nationality um, get togethers, you know, we have the US, we have Cypriots and Greeks and all sorts of societies there, which is lovely because it makes you feel really at home if you want to connect with students that have been in the city for a little bit longer, perhaps as well. Uh, politics, uh, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones. I mean, honestly, I think anything and everything. And um, as I say, they're always welcome for you to start something new if you've got your own little group. So uh, as I say, I'm sure, are we nodding? We've all pretty much got a similar, <laughs> a similar offer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I love that. Just a lovely community thing. And for Freshers Week as well, it is signing up to those things. You've got an immediate connection with 
a new group of people. You've got something in common and it's always a really good hook just to get started and, and settled into your new home. Yeah, and I think you hit the nail on the head there, actually, where like that freshest week, the first week of university, where it is all a bit nervous, daunting, but you go to the society tables and you see, actually, I'm really into baking. So I'm going to join the baking society and you actually have that common connection with people straight off. <laughs> and also, um, yeah, with like Great British Bake Off and things like that, you can just do the regular weekly cooks and just join in the competitions that they're doing on the TV show. It's amazing. <laughs> that sounds a bit ambitious to me, but I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I like this very much. I want to sign up for that. <laughs> um, yeah, and like Jen said, if there is um, a society that there isn't, there's something that you want to create but there isn't a society for it you get yourself and a couple of other friends and then you can sign up do it and the student union will give you financial support in getting that established and things so yeah it's really supportive um in that respect um so nick i'm going to come back to you again sports just because you're our sports person but no <laughs> um and just talk a bit about the sports system in wales and how it works Essentially, um, in the, the level of sport is very varied. Um, you can play, um, you know, for ourselves, for example, we actually have a number of teams in different sports. So you might have, um, you know, something like basketball playing in more national leagues and a more uh, semi-professional league, um, and then playing the British University Championships or Bucks, um, which is the kind of more Wednesday games uh, where we're competing against everyone. Uh, we also have varsity between ourselves, so um, I'll let Rach and uh, Jen fight that one out. Um, so that is, that is normally you guys, and I think, uh, yeah, I think we we start to do more of these varsity games. So it's a, a lot of fun. I think I used to keep going to those uh, Cardiff Swansea matches and forgot I was at Cardiff Met. Um, so. <laughs> I read uh, that the, the Swansea Cardiff one is the second biggest after uh, Oxford and Cambridge. I had no idea. Yeah, I know apparently it's huge. Just FYI. <laughs> it, correct, correct. And I think one of my favourite stories, just to you know, big up Cardiff a little bit, is Jamie Roberts, who was one of our Welsh rugby players, was studying medicine at Cardiff. And, you know, how to cheat the system? You get Jamie Roberts, a professional rugby player, to come and play for the Cardiff Uni team. I mean, come on, guys, that's a little bit harsh. And um, there may have been others sneaking around, but we, we won't comment about that. But yeah, I just remember going, Jamie Roberts? Hang on, that's cheating, isn't it? Um, so yeah, you, you can play at all levels and, and, you know, sometimes you'll have a student go, look, I just like to kick a ball around. I don't want to really play at that, you know, I don't want to play for Manchester United next week. Um, so, you know, there will be a team where they can just get a kick around and that social element. And I think that's what's really important. Um, I use sport myself to kind of get immerse myself into university and I was also involved in other societies, uh, which then crazily led me into becoming um, president one day at the Students' Union at Cardiff Minute. So, you know, you never know where these little random things are going to take you. I used to just turn up to play a bit of tennis. I was like their 23rd sub at the time. Um, and I used to walk onto the tennis court and I'd be playing with the Welsh professional players who, like, you know, were like, it would be like running against Usain Bolt um, after maybe having a lot of wine. Uh, was the comparison of my my standard compared to these guys but the fact that you've got to play at a higher level with these guys like yeah they did up my game I had to be that good um but you know it it really does you know you, you find a way you find what you want to get out of university and it doesn't just have to be reading a textbook um what I love about the sports side as well is you know if you get injured you've got the rehab side you know they treat you like you're a professional athlete and it's sadly, you know, we don't have the same scholarship system as the, the US, so we wouldn't fund somebody completely for their studies uh, to come and play sport, and sadly we're not set up that way. Um, but where we can find some funding, you know, we do try to bring the cost down a little as well. But yet they get to touch all kinds of sport. I think we've got Ultimate Frisbee if anyone's interested, but that was something I was keen to go and have a play. So <laughs> you never know where you're going to end up. No, that's that's true, isn't it? Ultimate Frisbee, it's really, um, yeah, blows my mind. I'm not really sure how you play that. Um, OK, so the final thing about to talk about then, I think, is so you're studying, you're working hard, but you want to get a little bit more experience or you want to get like a part time job. Rachel, are you able to elaborate a bit more like on work opportunities, um, internships, things like that? 
Yeah, of course. So I would say there's a couple of different ways to approach this. Um, one of the kind of main ways when you're researching programmes um, to study in the UK is to look at options that include professional placement years or um, sandwich years. We refer to them as a few different things, but essentially they tend to be uh, paid internships. So a lot of programmes will offer that. So as you may be aware, degrees are typically three years in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, but you will find that these professional placement years will make your degree a bit longer, um, so four years typically, but it's a great way to get work experience. So often it'll be things like business courses or um, engineering, things like that, that will include programmes, sorry, options like that. So that's definitely something I would look at in advance to see if you can build that experience in, because it's a great way to make contact with employers and uh, build up your resume as well. The other thing that I always encourage students to, to do is engage with our career services from day one, because that's a great way to give yourself the best chance um, of a kind of great start in your career once you leave. So if you've got access to things like workshops where they can help you work on your resume or your interview skills, or perhaps there's a, a specific kind of skill this is probably quite old school showing my age but maybe you want some um help with using excel or something like that nope just me probably just me um but that kind of thing you can get through the university in many circumstances um but also we'll have things like careers fairs too so you've got then access to employers who will come to the university to speak with students and to meet them and talk about opportunities that they have one of the other things is that you can work. So you can work for up to 20 hours per week while you're studying on a student visa. And often we'll have jobs available through the university. So we have something at Cardiff called Job Shop. I'm sure everybody has a version of that um, where you can sign up for vacancies and find out about different positions. And they tend to be quite good because they're often um, decently well paid, but also they know that your priority is your studies. So it's a good way to kind of make sure that you're integrating that into your experience, but in a way that's manageable. Um, and then finally, the other thing to bear in mind is that we now have um, a graduate visa, which students can apply for after they graduate, or after they finish their programmes, which allows you to stay in the UK for up to two years. So this is quite a recent development for us, and it's something we're all really excited about because it gives students the opportunity to stay, look for work, maybe take on unpaid internships, ideally not unpaid, but, you know, a bit more flexibility, basically, and it gives you that opportunity to stay and look for a career here if that's what you're hoping to, to achieve. So that's a bit of a, a whistle-stop tour of work opportunities because it's quite a big subject. We could probably present on that all night. But um, obviously, yeah, there's a few different strands there for you to go off and research. And obviously, let us know if you have questions. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Rachel. And I, I'll wrap up now because I, I noticed that we're getting um, near the end, but just want to say thank you to um, Daphna for allowing us an opportunity to present and talk about where so hopefully you've heard from our voices how passionate we are how much we are there to support you in your journey of looking for what subject you might want to study and coming to study with us in Wales um Rachel raised a really good point that I was remiss and did not mention at the start it's a three-year degree or if you're thinking well you guys won't be but if you're thinking further ahead it's a one-year master's program um you can apply through the same system that you apply to other UK universities, so through UCAS, um, through the Common App, or through, um, well, four of our universities are on the Common App, or direct to the university. And I did mention this, it is affordable. Our fees raise from about $15,000 a year up to about $30,000 a year, living in that dependent on the university, dependent on the course, and then living costs on top of that are really reasonable. Like I said, three times more affordable than in London. Um, so yeah, and seven of eight of our universities are FAFSA registered. So all the universities that I've got with me today are on FAFSA. Um, so you can use the federal um, loan there. But um, nothing else from me. I don't know whether my lovely colleagues want to say anything, if I've forgotten anything. Hopefully not. No? Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for listening to us. And I hope that you'll consider coming to study with us in Wales. Yes, and um, th thanks to all of you. That was really great information. Um, and I want to mention just a couple last things. Um, so if students are watching this and they're like, awesome, I am sold. What do I do now? We had a whole session earlier this month about UCAS, which is the central application for the UK, kind of like Common App here, but all the UK universities are on there. So check that out on the College Career Center YouTube page. Um, and you could also reach out to any of these reps for specific questions.
go to the uh, websites for the universities, et cetera. Come talk to me. I can help as best I can. Um, we also had a terrific session uh, yesterday on employability after international study because this keeps coming up, right? And most of our sessions have sort of touched on the really, really cool benefits of studying internationally um, in terms of employment, internships, work placement. And it really is very um, integral to international study, like in a lot of places, and um, I would say definitely in the UK, as well as in Ireland, and, and really a lot of places throughout Europe and the rest of the world, there's some element of work placement that is either automatic default or very easy to tack onto your program. Um, so at the session yesterday, our speakers talked all about it. I learned a whole bunch of new stuff, which was super helpful. Um, and so that also is on the um, College Career Center YouTube page. Um, and um, one last thing that I want to share, which is a super awesome picture. I don't know if students can kind of see this, but this is, I'm going to go glare, but you can kind of see this. This is from Snowdonia. So Rob mentioned that before. This is a huge panoramic picture that I took when I was there. Um, and it is probably one of my top five favorite pictures I've ever taken in my whole life. And I have it here in my office and it just makes me happy. It's such a beautiful, peaceful place. Um, some people have described it as like Narnia or, um, I don't know, you know, other like fantastic fictional places, um, the Shire, you know, wherever, um, and um, really do consider Wales. It's a little bit off the beaten path, even when thinking about UK, you know, a lot of people think London or uh, Manchester or some of the bigger cities or Scotland and um, and they're all wonderful too. Wales has a really, really amazing um, kind of magical character. And I hope that students will, will uh, look into it further. So thank you all for being here. Um, we've got, uh, oh, Rob, yeah, put a comment about a link to the presentation. Yeah, so we're gonna um, get students some slides and this will be posted as well on the YouTube channel. All right, any, any last comments that anyone want, would like to add? Okay, thank you all for being here. I really appreciate you and uh, we'll see you next year for University Month. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye.